sort of inter interactive books for the iPad, made specifically for the iPad. Um, and they're becoming really popular in hospitals and uh, universities. Uh, so I thought a good place to start is um, all the way back with uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and he's creating these uh, uh, amazing anatomical studies uh, just using traditional uh, media. Um, so he's using paints and pastels and charcoal. Uh, and things remained pretty much unchanged for centuries. Um, and even when I first started my uh, career, I was using just acrylic paints um, and pencils to uh, create these illustrations. Uh, this is uh, a polycystic kidney, um, which it looks quite strange, but um, it's a, a kidney that's become diseased and um, it's filled up with all these horrible cysts um, and actually causes the kidney to expand to four or five times the size of um, its normal size. Uh, uh, this is um, uh, an illustration of a hand dissection. So um, we've removed all of the skin just to show uh, the palmar aponeurosis, uh, which is this white uh, fibrous layer that uh, covers the palm of the hand. It has these very distinctive uh, bands that come up like this. Uh, but the purpose of the illustration is to, to make this clear. So uh, if you were to take a picture of this in real life, uh, it's very difficult to see all the different structures and things. Um, yeah, this is uh, another illustration from the same series. Um, that it was actually for a, a plastic surgeon that wanted to create um, a sort of reference book for his students um, so that when they're watching the surgery or um, having a lesson, uh, they can just refer to these and um, understand the anatomy a, a bit easier. So this is all the nerves in yellow and the arteries in red. Um, and it shows how they pass underneath that layer, that uh, aponeurosis. Um, so then uh, computers started to uh, develop and uh, become more affordable and um, they started to find their way into, a, into medical illustration. Uh, so now this is um, using uh, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, and this is really now the, the most popular way of creating illustrations for um, publishers, um, which has positives and negatives, because uh, the positives are they print really well because um, of vector illustrations. Um, and um, the downside is, because everyone's using the same programs, they tend to look very similar. So some of the, um, some of the art is taken away in, in a lot of ways. Um, but it's much more commercial to, to use this kind of style. So. Um, and then as computers have really progressed um, and become really more powerful and cheaper, um, we're now at the stage where uh, freelance artists can essentially create their own animation studio, uh, which 15, 20 years ago would have been impossible. Um, so this was um, some of the uh, 3D illustrations that I've been working on. So this is a, a skull, obviously, um, and I've used all kinds of reference uh, from my books uh, and through to real skulls. Um, and I was really just trying to get as much detail as possible. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Is that actually on? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically. Um, uh, I was trying to get it as detailed as I possibly could and as, as accurate as I possibly could as well. Um, so um, with the skeleton, uh, every tiny little hole and bump and notch and groove uh, is all there for a reason. Uh, you can't just make it all up. It's, um, it's, all, it's all there for a reason. Um, so th uh, this is a femur, um, and this is like the, the upper leg bone. Uh, and to create this one... Um, I actually used uh, a, a CT reconstruction um, as a guide, um, and then I could model it in Blender um, to create to create a very accurate um, form, basically, of the femur. Um, I then took it into uh, ZBrush um, uh, to sculpt all the finer details and do all the texturing. Uh, this is the uh, cervical spine, which is uh, the very top of the uh, spine. Uh, so your skull would sit right on top of this. Um, and I, uh, with this, I was actually um, uh, experimenting with uh, a feature called Spotlight uh, in ZBrush. 
uh, which is where you can actually map uh, photographic textures uh, onto the model very easily um, to create quite a nice realistic uh, look. Uh, this is the same model but from a slightly different angle. Uh, and uh, This was rendered in uh, Blender um, and with this one I, I tried to add um, some displacement uh, just to give it a little bit more texture. Um, and you can see the uh, the arteries that run right up the side of the uh, cervical spine and then they loop around and then back into the skull. Uh, this is one of the um, earlier projects I was, I was working on. Um, I actually created the whole skeleton, uh, every single bone, um, and then I thought uh, I would try building all of the major muscles of the body onto the skeleton. Um, so uh, this, this is all modeled in Blender. Um, and then I take it into ZBrush and do all the um, the colouring and the details. Uh, yeah, and this was um, about as far as I managed to get with the uh, model. So um, it is most of the uh, major muscles from the waist up, uh, apart from the face, which I'm still working on. Um, but uh, when I started this, um, I was really quite new to ZBrush, so. Um, I didn't really understand how to create the, the displacement maps and things, so I just made really dense, heavy models um, to sculpt all the details. Um, so at this stage now, uh, the poly count is so high that I can't really add any more, <laughs> um, more, any more muscles. So. Um, this is obviously an eyeball, um, but again, this was just experimenting with um, a program called uh, Octane. And... Um, I created the the eyeball in, in Blender just as um, very simple, uh, three simple shapes, and then mapped uh, the iris, the color part of the eye, onto the uh, model, uh, and then wrapped uh, this transparent uh, sphere around the whole thing to give it a transparent, shiny uh, look. So. Uh, this is um, a hip replacement, um, and 3D is very good for showing. Uh, how the components um, of implants actually all fit together and you can show the actual thing in situ and, and working. Uh, an another area that we work with is uh, medical instruments um, and 3D makes this so simple. Um, uh, back in the early days when we were trying to draw this with uh, pens, uh, it was just so difficult um, to get all these curves and uh, straight lines and uh, the actual metallic finish that a 3D can do so easily is um, uh, very difficult to do in uh, 2D. Um, this is an, uh, a similar one, but this is um, a tracheal uh, dilator. Um, so this is used in surgery to open the uh, neck. So. Uh, th this is a pretty standard uh, generic sort of illustration that we create for um, patient information. So. Uh, when we're trying to explain to patients uh, the anatomy that is involved uh, before they go for a surgery, um, we can show them illustrations like this, and they, t they see it, m m you know, more easily. So it's easier for the nurse to explain the procedure. Uh, this is um, a model of the bronchial tree, um, so it's the lungs. Um, and for this one, I was um, experimenting with the. 3D reconstruction is at the time. So as well as bones and things that we can reconstruct, uh, we can also reconstruct the uh, the bronchial tree. So I use that as a guide and then um, create uh, a nice clean topology, um, which I can then sculpt in ZBrush. Uh, this is taking it one step further. So this is creating all the, the tiny blood vessels that are in the lungs and all the, the tiny bronchial uh, tubes and things. Um, and th th this was actually surprisingly easy t to make as well as uh, quite complicated mesh. Um, there's a feature in Blender um, called the, the tree script. So it's actually for making trees. Um, but it's such a similar structure uh, that, it, that it, it really works quite well. It only, only took about uh, an hour or something like that to create that very, that much detail. So. Uh, this next stage is um, the 3D reconstruction. So um, this is a, an example of a, 
uh, a still CT, so just one CT image. Um, when, when a patient has a CT scan, um, the scanner will, will create lots and lots of slices like this uh, all along the body. Uh, and we can then process all of those in the computer um, to create uh, very detailed um, images of the patient's anatomy. So this is a real person. Um, and if you look in the, in the corner of the armpit there, there's like a red uh, lump, and that's most likely the reason why they had uh, this CT scan. So this is probably a tumor. Right? Uh, but the amazing thing we can do uh, with these CT scans is separate all, the, all of the uh, anatomy. So we can have um, the skin as a, as a separate layer, uh, the muscles as a separate layer, uh, the blood vessels, and then the bones underneath as a completely separate layer. And then we can make areas transparent so we can actually see the anatomy underneath. Uh, so this is with all of the soft tissue removed. Uh, so this is just the skeleton. Um, and you can see how much uh, detail the actual scan picks up. Um, if you look in the hands here, we have these tiny little bones here. Uh, and these are called the sesamoid bones. Um, and it even picks those up, which are tiny, tiny little bones. So it's a huge amount of detail. Uh, this is a slightly strange looking one, but this is... Um, with the uh, all of the skeleton, but with just some of the blood vessels, the major uh, arteries, basically. Um, so we can take this into ZBrush um, and s start to paint on the uh, the colour uh, onto the um, arteries to separate it from the bone. Um, this this is still a work in progress, so uh, you can still see some of the uh, arteries that still need to be coloured. Um, this one just shows how you can actually slice away some of those layers because they're all separate. Um, and you, then underneath you can see um, uh, it uh, doesn't construct muscle too fantastically, but you can still use that as a guide. Um, so you can, if you wanted to make the, uh, the muscles uh, of the upper limb, you can use this as a very rough guide to make sure that the atomy is in the right place. Uh, so underneath here you can see the... Uh, this is a, a large muscle that comes up, uh, and it's called the sternocleidomastoid, uh, I think, something like that. And then um, this is the edge of the deltoid and the pectoralis muscle. That's the clavicle coming down. Um, yeah, this one's just a very, uh, very detailed render of the teeth, basically. Um, and I put this one in just so you can see how uh, by making it semi-transparent, you can actually see the, the tissue depth from the skin down to the bone, uh, which can be uh, really useful for creating illustrations. Yeah, again, the uh, reconstruction of the muscles is, uh, is not that great usually, but sometimes you can get quite good results. Um, so this is actually showing um, all of the major muscles of the lower limb. Uh, and you can even see the, the uh, serrations in the muscle, so all that texture. Um, this one is um, a reconstruction of a, an aneurysm. So um, this is the, the white part underneath. This is the uh, base of the skull. And then the red area is the uh, blood vessels of the brain. So the uh, carotid arteries are coming in into the base of the skull. And then they, they bend around like this. And then they form a network of uh, blood vessels called the circle of Willis. And this is a very common area where you get these aneurysms. Uh, the aneurysm is obviously this huge uh, bulge in the middle. This is quite a large aneurysm, this one. Uh, but by reconstructing it in 3D, uh, the surgeon can actually um, take a look at the um, patient's condition before he actually does the surgery. So it gives him a very good view of um, the anatomy before he actually goes in and operates. Uh, this is um, another aneurysm, uh, but from a different viewpoint. So we've We've cut away um, part of the skull um, so that you can actually see the two vertebral arteries coming in through the base of the skull. This hole at the bottom is where the spinal cord passes through. Uh, but these two vertebral arteries also come in and, and then they merge and uh, form this network of uh, blood vessels. Uh, this is a very close-up uh, view of, of the aneurysm. So it's um, this uh, small bump here. 
um, and that's a very common place to get the uh, the aneurysm. Again, this is even closer. Um, this is uh, looking from uh, the front of the skull, just with half of the skull removed, and uh, just for a different viewpoint. And that's looking uh, from above. Um, so this is just a couple of examples of how we're actually using them. So uh, this was um, created for a doctor um, that wanted to um, present uh, this case where uh, the patient has a tumor in the side of the face. Um, so we were able to make the reconstruction uh, and then uh, use it for a poster presentation she was doing. Um, this is a, a hyoid bone, which uh, is a bone that sits in your throat. Um, and it's very important for uh, speech because it has all sorts of muscles attaching to it. Um, and this was done for a speech therapist um, who was presenting a particular case um, and wanted to show uh, how this was fractured in, in the patient's uh, neck. Uh, so these are this is just a couple of little case studies. Um, this is quite a severe one, so but... Um, Basically, uh, this is a patient that fell onto um, an iron bar, and um, the iron bar has gone straight through the skull into the brain. Um, and this this was um, for a presentation that the surgeon um, who wanted to show how they removed the iron bar, basically. So uh, the patient was fine, uh, survived, no brain damage, nothing I incredible, really. Um, so what we what we created for them. Um, was an animation um, showing the iron bar in the skull. So we created um, a 3D reconstruction from the CT scan that the patient had after the surgery um, so we could see the hole. Uh, and then we created um, a fake digital iron bar using this as a guide uh, for the shape and size. And then we were able to position that in Blender uh, using the X-rays as, as a guide, as background images, uh, to align everything so we can show the angle and the depth uh, of the bar in, in the person's uh, skull. Uh, this is uh, just a quick uh, animation of that. Uh, hopefully it will work. So you can see a huge iron bar. <laughs> Um, the second one is, um, uh, again, uh, a, a doctor wanting to show um, how he's um, fixed uh, this patient's uh, injuries. Um, this, this patient had quite a large trauma to the side of the face, um, and you can see all of the um, fractures in the skull, uh, all the bones kind of separating and coming apart. And on the uh, close-up, you can actually see the base of the orbit. Uh, some of the bones are actually sticking up, um, so they have to push all this back into place. And then they have to um, fix it all with titanium plates. Uh, so we, we created a, re a 3D reconstruction uh, before the surgery and then a 3D reconstruction after the surgery. Uh, so this was the uh, before and this is after. Um, so all these uh, gray areas are the, are the titanium plates. Um, th but these have been colored in ZBrush just to highlight them, basically. Um, the white areas of... Uh, uh, the orbit. This is, these are actually titanium plates as well, um, just holding everything down. Uh, and this, um, these strange sort of um, metal blobs coming over here. These are actually staples um, from where they've had to uh, fix the incision that they've had to make to gain access to the face. Uh, this is just a quick rotation in ZBrush to uh, give you a better idea of the uh, anatomy. So although the, the reconstructions can be quite noisy and messy, um, you can use those as 
as a brilliant guide for making uh, very uh, anatomically correct models. Um, I, I can't, have I actually gone over now? Or have, I've still got time. I can't tell. I'll, I'll, I wanted to show these iBooks anyway, so um, I'll just plug it in. So, um, iBooks are um, these interactive books that are, are designed specifically for the iPad. Um, it's a free piece of software. Uh, if you use the, if you use Macs, um, you can download this for free uh, and create these uh, iBooks very easily. Um, so we've been creating these for the uh, hospital. Um, so when a patient uh, comes in for um, surgery, uh, we can show them these iBooks, um, and it and it demonstrates the um, procedure to them so that they um, can make informed decisions about uh, the treatment options. So uh, we can have these interactive diagrams. So you can um, pull these out, make them go full screen. Uh, then you can add these labels, and you click the label, and it will zoom in and tell you more about it. Uh, it's a really nice program to use; very, very simple to, uh, to put together. Uh, you can drop animations in, so you, you can um, have them playing full screen. I won't play the whole thing because it takes a while. Um, And then you can just have it um, all split into chapters. Um, and you can just put anything you want in there. Um, really fantastic program. Um, I'll just quickly show you this other one. So yeah, yeah, you can pinch with two fingers. And this will bring it down to um, this level where you can see all the individual chapters. Uh, these little dots at the bottom are all individual chapters. And you can see um, exactly what's in each chapter. Uh, just by clicking on it. And then you can just scroll through as if it's a book. I'm not sure what's happening there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can also have these... Um, uh, Collada files, um, so you can drop these in and then have models that you can, the patient can actually rotate themselves on the screen. Um, and they, the nurse can actually use this to uh, demonstrate the anatomy as well. And you can use the fingers to really go in close. And so um, if anyone uses Max, it's, uh, it's a good one to play with anyway. So. Uh, and that's, that's the end, I think. Yeah. Software to make the actual reconstructions uh, is again is free, um, but uh, they only make it for the Apple, so it's an, an Apple uh, program. Uh, it's called Azirix. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's it's quite easy to use as well. Actually, uh, they have a few uh, data sets as well that you can play with uh, on the website. Uh, yeah, really good.